I want to take a minute to talk about something that is actually becoming quite disturbing. And it, it seems to be a trend that I think is going to be very destructive for all of us, as, as well as mostly our country. I have seen a lot of people and some of them that I, I think do a really good job of talking about the current problems and, and things that are facing us. Um, where everybody is saying that we need a divorce. We need, the country needs to break up. We can no longer communicate with each other. And we just, we can't keep functioning the way that we are. And I, and I totally agree with that position. I totally agree that we're in a position now that for, for whatever reason, and I know what the reason is, but for whatever reason, you've got, 50% 50% of the people that have one point of view and 50% of the people that have another point of view and that we can't continue to function as a, as a country with that type of thing going on. And so the opinion is, is that we need to break apart. We need to have the states become their own states and we need to, to, you know, stop all this craziness, just go do what you want to do and, and be done with it. But <clears throat> The problem that we have, though, and the, and the 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 reason that I'm really concerned about this this mode of thinking is that the United States of America is actually a, an extremely important thing to maintain. It, an individual state on its own cannot fight China. Um, it, it can't. In fact, it can't even survive within its own border within within its own system. So. It's kind of disturbing that we would be talking about destroying the United States of America and having individual states representing themselves and doing business as themselves. And somehow we're going to survive the onslaught of all of the countries trying to take our our property and our, our country, our land. And. So it really, it, it brings us back to, well, okay, so we can't break apart. It's, it's not going to work. And, and just to give you an example, if I were to break the country apart and say that, okay, Georgia is going to be a leftist state and Tennessee is going to be a, a right-wing state. Well, the first problem that you have is that, well, that means that everybody's got to move and most people aren't going to move. They don't have the money to move and, and there really is no reason for them to move um, because that's not really what's going on. And I think that you would probably find out if something like that were to take place that you wouldn't even have as many people on the left as you thought you had because most of the conflict, most of the, the, the things that are going on right now are all related to the media and the government lying to us. It's not really happening. I mean, ask yourself how many people outside or in your circle or in your town are running around burning buildings down and acting like a fool? And, and the answer is very few. So if any. Um, so I, I, I would argue on one hand that things aren't as bad as they seem because the media is, you know, uh, making it look like we're all at odds with each other. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I just feel that that's probably the fact. Um, so breaking apart is not the solution. The solution is figuring out how to talk to each other. And I think the, the first step to being able to talk to each other is for both sides, the Republicans and the Democrats, to realize that you're both being manipulated equally. You, you have two completely things, completely different things going on, and, and most people aren't, aren't paying attention to it. But the Republicans, and I talked about this in an earlier video, the Republicans are being lied to to believe that the Republican Party is doing something conservative that they that they're making the government smaller and they're they're actually doing something for the people and, and the democrats are being lied to in the sense that they believe that the politicians that are in the democratic party care about them and that they're trying to give them equity and they're trying to give them equal rights as if they don't have equal rights already 
And and so both both sides are being gaslit into believing that that party represents what they want in life. But they're never actually taught what it's like to have a life. They're, we're all slaves in the system or in the party that we're a member of. So if you're sitting here watching this video as a Republican, then ask yourself, what does that actually mean? Why do you support the Republicans? I know what you're going to say because it's what I would say is that, well, they don't, you know, they don't want to get rid of our guns or they don't want to get rid of free speech or they won't. But the thing is, is they don't actually stand up for any of those things either. So they, if you consider the fact that throughout history and throughout, definitely throughout our life, we have seen the government continue to go down the same trail, which is that they get more and more control. Forget whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Who ends up with more control if you get what it is that you're after? And it's always the government. The government gets more and more control over our lives the more and more we allow them to do so. And so what the government has learned and the politicians have learned and the bankers have learned is that if they can pit two sides of a populace against each other, then they can continue to grow in the name of equity. They can continue to grow their power and control everybody that's under them. So they start off trying to control or trying to give equity to the lower side of, of the equation. But eventually they'll maintain, they will gain so much control over the populace that they can do anything they want. And that is exactly what they will end up doing. It's what they're doing right now. So, Somehow we've got to start talking. And the problem is, and I'm guilty of this as well, is the problem is, is that I look at myself as a Republican and therefore any Democrat should be squashed. And, and so the problem with the Democrat is they look, consider themselves a Democrat and they want equity and any Republican or conservative should be squashed. And that's how we enter the room to have this discussion. And I've been fighting with myself trying to figure out, well, how do you get past this? How do you get a Democrat to sit down and talk to you? And how do you get a Republican to sit down and talk to you and not have this fight, this, this at odds with each other that never allows you to actually have a conversation? And I th think maybe I've come up with some way that we might be able to proceed. And in the next series of videos, we're going to give it a try, see, see if it actually works. So what I would encourage everyone to do, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, is to stop listening to the, the mainstream media. Any of these people that are out on the, the airwaves trying to push a narrative, they should be completely ignored because they're all making money and they're all controlling what we are thinking. They're, they're making up decisions for us and we're never actually talking to each other. You know, the Jones guy that, that runs around talking about critical race theory and all this other craziness that he says, the, he, he's trying to control a narrative and he's being paid to do so. So he doesn't want the you know uh, i can't remember uh, the girl's name but but he did a, a debate with with the blonde headed girl um i anyway it doesn't matter he did a debate with her and all you saw in the debate were, were the two sides they never actually came to an agreement with each other they never actually looked for the commonality between the two of them they both just argued their points on both sides of the table and the problem is that when you're doing that, none of us are really talking. We're actually arguing with each other. And I, and I would leave out there that arguments are good. It is good to have an argument because it opens up conversation on both sides to be able to find a, a solution. But that's the key that is missing right now is what is the solution that anybody is actually after? I mean, right now, it's like everybody's trying to score points as to who's got the better argument. And the, the problem is, is facts are facts. They're having an argument about equity, for example, when the facts show that most people are already in that state. 
that is not really an argument anymore. Now, now that's just being stupid. And so we've got to get to a point where instead of arguing points, we start asking people to define what it is they want because getting people to think about what it is they want in life and you just listening to what those things are, you may find out that you have a lot more in common than you actually think. And once you identify these commonalities between uh, all, both sides, we need to start forming a solution so that we can come up with, with something that actually works for everybody. We know for a fact that there are always going to be people that can't afford to live on their own. They, they don't have the mental capacity to be able to reach a, a, a occupation or anything, or they're really bad at managing money. Um, there's, there's reasons that th some people are just lazy. And so there are, these people that we have to deal with there, there's just no way around it and so we need a system that's going to have something in place to deal with those types of people now i would argue that the current system of giving them free stuff is not the solution there needs to be some way that we can deal with lazy people and you know perhaps having them have to perform a function to be able to get the money that they're actually after. And if they don't have the ability to perform any function because they're handicapped or they're, you know, they have uh, mental issues that don't allow them to, to be able to function in society, then we'll have, you know, a, a fund to take care of those people so that they don't fall through the cracks. But there are ways to solve these problems. The, the, the issue at hand, though, is giving the government the ability to solve these problems is not the solution. It never has been. And it's one of the biggest contentions between the left and the right is that the left truly believes that giving the government more power will make everything more equal, where the right looks at that and thinks they're completely insane. And to be honest, they are, because the government is never going to solve any problems. The government is going to take money from the people that have it, and they're going to give a little bit of it to the people that don't, but never enough to actually make things equal. And, and so... You, and, and you run the, the tremendous risk of taking the people that produce the goods and causing them to not work anymore because, it, like, what's the point? Everybody's getting free money, so just give me free money. I don't want to, you know, I, I want to be a guitar player. I want to, you know, do something and be free. Um, so just give me some money and, and I'll, you know, cut down on the, on the amount of things that I want to buy and the things that I want to do, and I'll just be lazy like everybody else. And, it, and when you reach that point, the government serves no purpose. They, they no longer can function and society as a whole falls apart. And, and I'd argue that we're at that point. We're at that breaking point. And so the question is, is are, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue to sit here and let the media keep us arguing with each other? Or are we going to attempt to actually do something about it? And so I'm going to go out of my uh, comfort zone and start seeing if I can have conversations with people that disagree with my points of view and, and see if we might be able to identify some common things, some common themes that we might be able to start to build on to get together. Because I would argue that our number one threat in this country is the Democratic Party and the Republican Party equally. I think they both are criminal organizations they are they're one and the same they're only there by design to control the entire populace of the country um, because like i said in an earlier video if you feel like your party's in control then you relax your you know your points of view to let them handle business and in reality they never handle the business they just continue down the road um, you could argue this on both sides the democrats do the exact same thing um, the Democrats are catering to a populace that they have purposely held down in the education level. And they so, so they have people under their control. They're basically we're all slaves. We're slaves to the party that we support. And we need to have an independent party. And that's the only party we have. 
the politicians that go to the federal government to argue our, uh, you know, our points of view have always been at the point or should have been at the point that they were representing the, the people that they came from. That's why they're supposed to reside in the county and in the city and in the state that they actually are representing because they're supposed to represent us and they're supposed to argue our points of view. And the problem that we have right now is that the politicians have their own points of view. They, they don't care about our points of view. They don't care about our problems. They never have. And we need to figure out a way that we can make them responsible for the things that they're actually doing. And so before we can do that, we've got to get a body of politicians together, which I say needs to be us, not politicians, not people that want to go get famous and, and make a lot of money uh, representing themselves. We need to start taking over these political parties. Both parties, again, not in not representing Democrats or Republicans, um, but we've got to figure out how to do this and we've got to do it by talking to each other and we can't break the country up. That's not a solution. It's completely unrealistic and, and it will never happen. It'll never work. And so we we have a foundation called the Republic. Um, it was formed for the purpose of manage, us allowing to ma being able to manage ourselves and to be able to manage our government, not the other way around. Um, we have allowed, we've gotten lazy, and we have allowed it to get completely out of control to the point that we now have a monarchy instead of a republic. And we need to get that republic back. And to do that, we need to educate people about what the republic is. We need to... to educate people as to what socialism and, and democracy mean. Um, and we need to try to get everybody to the, to the table to realize that we're all being brainwashed and we're all being taken advantage of. And then at that point, start to develop solutions to, to hopefully get this country back in or get it in. I'd argue that it, you know, it almost went astray immediately. We now see w how it went astray and we need to put things in place to prevent it from happening again so we have a republic we have a, a system that works we need to restore it and we need to you know figure out things to plugs to put into places that we can prevent the thing from getting out of control again or at least delay the the inevitable uh, you know in, in farther into the future and so that is going to be my new direction um, I am I have a, a site called wearewoke.us that I am starting to put together and try to organize some of these thoughts. Um, so I'll continue to, to make videos. I'm hoping that I can, you know, I'm, I'm a little leery about walking up to strangers and asking them if, if we can have a conversation, but I'm going to try to come out of my shell and start doing that, um, you know, just to see how it goes. Um, so hopefully that'll work. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Make videos of you having conversations, honest conversations with people that you disagree with just to see if you can actually, if this is solvable, we may actually be at an impasse to the point that we'll never recover. But it, I hope that we're not at that point. I hope that we actually can still have conversations and we can still identify the things that are our problems and come up with solutions to them instead of this terminal back and forth, left and right thing that we've been doing so far.